Hello everyone, today we'll be talking about water cycle. But before that, don't forget to like and subscribe. Water is the basic element of nature. It covers 70% of Earth's surface. It provides life, eases out heat, drains harmful substances, and mediates many day-to-day -day works. Water needs to be replenished, purified, and circulated again and again so that it can perform its functions. Nature does this job through a process called the water cycle. Seven steps of the water cycle. Step one, evaporation. The water cycle begins with evaporation. It is a process where water at the surface turns into water vapors. Water absorbs heat energy from the sun and turns into vapors. Water bodies like the oceans, the seas, the lakes, and the river bodies are the main source of evaporation. Through evaporation, water moves from hydrosphere to the atmosphere. As water evaporates, it reduces the temperature of the bodies. Step 2. Condensation As water vaporizes into water vapor, it rises up in the atmosphere. At high altitudes, the water vapors changes into very tiny particles of ice water droplets because of low temperature. This process is called condensation. These particles come close together and form clouds and fogs in the sky. Step 3. Sublimation Apart from evaporation, sublimation also contributes to water vapors in the air. Sublimation is a process where ice directly converts into water vapors without converting into liquid water. This phenomenon accelerates when the temperature is low or pressure is high. The main sources of water from sublimation are the ice sheets of the North Pole and the South Pole and the ice caps on the mountains. Sublimation is a rather slower process than evaporation. Step 4. Precipitation The clouds condense water vapors, then pour down as precipitation due to wind or temperature change. This occurs because the water droplets combine to make bigger droplets. Also, when the air cannot hold any more water, it precipitates. At high altitudes, the temperature is low and hence the droplets lose their heat energy. These water droplets fall down as rain. If the temperature is very low, below zero degrees, then the water droplets will fall as snow. In addition, Water could also precipices in the form of drizzle, sleet, and hail. Hence, water 
enters lithosphere. Step 5. Transpiration. As water precipitates, some of it is absorbed by the soil. This water enters into the process of transpiration. Transpiration is a process similar to evaporation where liquid water is turned into water vapor by the plants. The roots of the plants absorb the water and push it towards leaves where it is used for photosynthesis. The extra water is moved out of the leaves through stomata, very tiny openings on leaves as water vapor. Thus, water enters the biosphere and exits into gaseous phase. Step 6. Runoff As the water pours down in whatever form, it leads to runoff. Runoff is the process where water runs over the surface of Earth. When the snow melts into water, it also leads to runoff. As water runs over the ground, it displaces the top soil with it and moves the minerals along with the stream. This runoff combines to form channels, rivers, and ends up into lakes, seas, and oceans. Here, the water enters hydrosphere. Step 7 infiltration some of the water that precipitates does not run off into the river and is absorbed by plants or gets evaporated it moves deep into the soil this is called infiltration The water seeps down and increases the level of ground water table. It is called pure water and is drinkable. The infiltration is measured as inches of water soaked by the soil per hour. So that is the end of this video. If you enjoyed it, please like and subscribe and also turn on the notification bells so you'll be notified for new videos. Peace.